Hi, welcome back to Mic Up or Shut Up. This is Reagan. It's episode 19. And before we begin, I would like to thank everyone who voted on the poll and would like to hear me introduce the show as a game show host. Now, just so you know, we are going to do it, but I'm going to wait till the finale make a big production just so I can piss off Bodie and Chris who don't want me to do it. Uh, but I'm going to make a big ordeal. So thanks for voting, letting you know. Y'all will hear it soon. I am here with my sister-in-law, Angie. Hi. Her husband, my brother, Chris. Hey. And my loving husband, Bodie. Big dog, big dog. So, what are we going to start with today, Chris? Uh, uh, let me just say, I didn't say my new catchphrase because I knew it was making some people jealous. Oh, did it? Who so, it made jealous? Yeah. So, oh, you know, it was, oh, it was you. making you jealous. Oh, it was, it was oh. making you jealous. So, so now no, I got to come no, up no. with another catchphrase. Like no, it doesn't. It doesn't make me jealous. The only thing that makes me jealous is the actual visual. <laughs> that makes me jealous. Like when I used to have to change my son's diapers. That, that caused me some serious anxiety. <laughs> so Chris, as long as you're not in diapers, we're good. Okay, well I guess next He's week. Not I guess yet. next week I'll have my old uh, catchphrase back. Right. Well, yeah, no, as long as you don't helicopter around the house, gotcha, we're okay. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, where were we? <laughs> well, we were going to talk about something, and apparently we went way left field. Oh, okay. That's what we do. Though. That is what we do, and I love it. I love every minute yeah. of it. Right? right. No. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I think it's great. Like, before we pressed the record button, there was so much left field. Am I right? No, I know. So we much really left field. We really have to start recording We really should we be record. recording before we record. Yeah. <laughs> because there is so much left field that goes on in this room. Yep. Exactly. So, I guess, uh, we, you know, being as it's Christmas time, we can go ahead and knock out a couple of Christmas topics and then uh, move on from there. So, you can get that out of your system. You want us to talk about it the whole show. We get it away. What do you think right of that, away. Grinch? Yeah. He who or she who hates Christmas. Yes. Okay, first of all, I'd like to clarify no, don't that clarify. I hate all holidays, not just Christmas. So let's get that clear. <laughs> I, I I hate all holidays equally. I'm an equal opportunist holiday hater. You even hate which Christmas? which is just a year oh, round fuck yeah. Oh, do you hate the having to get together for it or do you hate the Food and no, I hate it all. I, like, I would just rather say, hey, my people, y'all go do whatever y'all want. I'll just stay in bed, maybe watch a movie, right. take a nap. But no, I am forced to also get out and do things. I think it's the being happy part that she doesn't like. Yes. Boy, <laughs> you have no idea the nail that you just hit on the head. Do you understand me? I do know because I grew up with it. Yes. Yes, uh, that is a fact. You can't say that much because you are almost exactly like Oh, that. no, no. I am the life of the party. Are you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I am. The I, pity party? That's what I tell myself. <laughs> anyway. As far as I'm concerned, I have to agree. Thank you. <laughs> One fan, that's all I need. That's all you need is just me. I'm your biggest <laughs> fan, buddy. Your biggest. Remember that. I do remember that, bud. All right, so I love uh, that let's guy. talk about a weird Christmas topic that I think about every year and I cannot wrap my head around. And that is the fact that Every depiction you have ever seen of Santa Claus, he's laughing, smiling really big, making toys. Cheeks, yeah, you know, rosy cheeks. He's uh, eating some cookies and milk. He's uh, handing out presents to people. And yet, children are terrified of him when <laughs> they see him. You ever think about that? That's odd, is it not? I was terrified of him. I was terrified of him because I always thought he was a pimp. <laughs> He's always calling his hoes. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> no, I was never scared of Santa Claus. I wasn't no, either. I wasn't either. But I mean, you know what I'm talking about? How you see you see kids oh. who see Santa Claus and then they lose their shit. Yes. And I'm like, why are they losing Is their shit? Is it the beard? He, I think so. I think it's no one has a beard like that. And all of a sudden, your mom hands you to this guy with a, a ton of facial hair. Right? And, and says, I'm going to step away for a minute. Smile. I guess. But I mean, the fact that every image that any kid has ever seen of Santa Claus is a happy image. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I don't know. I just find it so odd that kids love Santa Claus. They love Christmas. But yet, if they see him, they piss their pants. I have a second or piss theory. Their diapers. They always say they're going to tell Santa knows how you've been acting. 
Mm. And what if you're shitting your pants going, oh, crap, did he really see me steal that candy bar last week? Oh, uh, maybe. Did he maybe. see me with the Fredericks of Hollywood catalog? <laughs> I mean, maybe so. <laughs> Maybe, so. maybe, eat ourselves or eat. maybe they don't even realize subconsciously that they're thinking, shit, he really knows all the trouble I've been in. Well, maybe, maybe that's it. I think it's more possible that the facial hair is what did it, but if that is the truth, and that theory is valid, with the uptick in men's facial hair these days, obviously beards are the in trend for men in this particular day and age, right? That's right. Would would that be less of a thing? Would you see more children warming up to Santa Claus and not being so scared of him if their own father has a big face full of fair or, you know? Santa still has the biggest beard I've ever seen. I mean, that thing, he his entire face is covered except for his eyes, basically. I think it's also the red right. suit. I think it's, you know, the... But your mom is handing you over and stepping away. So you're saying to that, someone you've never met. You're saying that if Santa Claus didn't have any beards, they were clean shaven, that kids would have no problem with them. That no, I be, think they would have know, a better. That would be an interesting experiment of, to do. I think they'd actually. have a better chance of accepting him because they could see the face. I mean, you're literally just seeing a ball of hair in a big red suit. Although I submit that if somebody should do an experiment where they go to a mall and have a clean shaven Santa Claus and see how kids react. Although I suspect that what would actually happen is they would say, that's not really Santa Claus. Right. Yeah. They would tell you that's not him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because every, like you said, every depiction of him has him a certain way. Yeah. So your kid would automatically call yeah, Somebody BS. should really look into this. Maybe like you sit on the so If there's any, there any psychologists listening to this episode, uh, get on that. Or maybe an MIT study should be Anything, done. yeah. Something. <laughs> right. I also think that um, kids do better when there's a Mrs. Claus there. You think? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Oh, see, now... There's a lot of experiments that need to be done. Now we're getting into Oedipus complexes <laughs> and things. I don't know if we're ready for that type of Freudian shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you really think about it, the Santa at the mall where you go take your picture, your mom is literally just handing you to this big thing. Yep. This big guy and walking away. Why does the man have to be this big thing? That because that's Santa what he Claus is. If he's not big, he stuffs that's, his that's right. suit. That's right. Well, Santa's job. I mean, I understand that urge. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, which is why I don't do my I didn't do my catchphrase. Well, Occasionally, catch you have to stuff your suit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. one of those things. Well, Speaking of which, oh. didn't were you in high school when when the high school girls used to stuff their suits? I do remember that. Yeah. I want to know if anybody actually participated in that behavior. No, I never had to. Oh. Uh, no, I went from zero to D. Yeah? Yeah, so there was no stuff. I went from Very zero quickly, to right? C. That's where I went, from zero to C. I, I have noticed. Uh, no, never mind. Next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, this, this can be good against you in the court of law. <laughs> right. I, I was about to say some things that sounded very... Child molestation y, and I wanted to not yeah. say it. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not have to go visit you. I do, glass, you know what, but I do find that, ki that teenagers these days are very sexualized. They're very. Oh, do you find that? No, they are. <laughs> yeah, they I are, know. Like, the clothes they wear are very slutty. We yeah. did not have Wonder Bras when I was in high Thank school. You. There was no padded shit when I was in high the school. The coolest thing I ever had was a front class bra, and I thought that was the shit. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going to say, but it was going to sound way more pervy coming well, from me. But the kids these days are built differently than the kids yes. I remember when I yes, was in that, school. That, they are. that viral video going around with that teacher that uh, was teaching ballet class and said her five-year-olds were demanding she play Pound Town for them to do ballet to. Right. Pound Town, for God's sakes. Right. Five-year-olds. Not good. I know, not good at all. And then when she all. said something to the mom about it, she goes, well, why didn't you play it? Ridiculous. I mean, what? yeah. Very aggressively that immoral. That song is, is rough. It is. Yeah, if you're five. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying, like, even even as an adult, I was like, ooh. No. My 17-year-old knew the lyrics to a song, and I was like, oh, my God. Please never sing that in front of me again. Did we not tell that story already? I don't know, but it still upsets yeah, yeah, me yeah. and has uh, scarred me for I life. I don't, I don't Myself. Think, I don't think you said it on the podcast. Yes, I've also been scarred by that particular uh, was it lyric. Was it wop? Wap. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, no, it's not. No, no, not not the one you're thinking of. Oh, what was it? Uh, uh, 
And look, I'm going to sing gonna... on this podcast, That's... which is going to be great. Okay, Everybody that get means ready. You just can't Buggle put up. this episode on YouTube either. <laughs> Go. Because well, this is the story. We're driving in the car, and my 17-year-old always has to has control have control of the Bluetooth. So she puts the Bluetooth connected to her phone so that she can DJ yeah. all of the music that we listen to on any road trip that we ever go on. Right. This is just one of the <laughs> things that you have to accept as part of this family is that sure. she will have control <laughs> of the music you listen to. So as we're on the way home from somewhere, I don't even know where we were going one day, she puts on a song. And she always gets into the music that she's playing, so she's singing in the background to the song, the lyrics that are being sung by the people on the song. And I hear, in between words of conversation with my wife, I hear, I'm trying to know if I could hit it from behind, though. And my daughter, 17-year-old, is singing it in the background. <laughs> and I'm yeah. thinking, you want to know if you can hit it from behind? What did you just say? I had to ask her, and this is the lyric you're talking about, right? And she was not 17 at the time. No, I think she was 16. It was not something that right. I wanted to hear. My and it only went no, downhill no. from there. Right. And I don't even remember the name of the song, but I'm sure somebody probably No, because knows. I told her, like, please don't ever play that in front of me again. I'm disturbed <laughs> that you know all those words. Yeah, that's not my genre of music, so I don't know what it was. Well, normally we have very good taste in music mm -hmm. we all agree on the songs we mm -hmm. have a very wide variety i mean she listens to some old school shit and I, I, we were just literally jaws on the floor well we have discussed this before the reason that kids find their way to our old school music and start liking it is because yeah. there is none these right days. It's the, music the stuff, stuff that they're making these days is garbage right so the yeah. youth generation goes back a couple decades and starts listening to the same music that we listen to, right. which I think is really cool. No, it you is know, cool. Because we, yeah. you know, we can agree on a lot of different music together, which yeah. is great, but that's why that is. There's just none. Yeah. They're music making today garbage. is just soulless cash grabs. Correct. You know, yeah. which, of course, they wanted to make money back in the day, too, but, I mean, at least they were trying to make a decent song. Right. Well, try now you don't even have to know how to sing. Right. Yeah, well, no. just fix it yep. in the studio. And the more immoral you go, the the more, the more yeah. money that you can make. You yep. know, the more you talk about things that are not supposed to be talked about in your song, the the better it is. The more popular it is. Right. It's ridiculous, really. But it's just trash. Trash, I say. And I sound like the man that says, "Get off my lawn!" Right? I'm that guy. But it no, is, no, no. In this instance, no, you don't, because five year olds should not be singing Pound Town. <laughs> right. I, just, I mean, I. I don't I mean, think I've ever heard Pound Town. Just read the lyrics. Just read the lyrics. The lyrics. We just read the lyrics, and I was like, "What the hell?" Yeah, the, I wouldn't the even. The title is enough for me. I wouldn't even be comfortable playing it just me and him in the car, just because it's so inappropriate. Like it's just. Like, <laughs> I mean, that sounds. <laughs> that's that's an odd. Yeah, that's an odd thing for you to say. But, no, uh, I mean <laughs> now we understand why they don't have children. <laughs> uh, it's because, uh, unlike yourself, I read a book about reproduction. <laughs> and I understood what it took. You see, you follow me? I wasn't going, hey, where are all these children coming from? Chris, I, I'm Chris, multitask. Listen, I know exactly where children come I from. I also read a book about reproduction, and I know where it comes from, and it happens to be my favorite place. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. All right, well, I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> at the end of December, let's look at each other's bank accounts and see who's uh, frowning the hardest. That's yes. all I'm saying. Yes, we can definitely do that because <laughs> I will be on my knees crying. <laughs> you will win, guaranteed, hands down. So that is well, why... I also have people that can go do things for me. What do you have? Epiphany. Ooh. I just had a light bulb go off in my head. What's that? Sorry to interrupt, but it has to happen because when the light bulb goes off, you have to speak. Or you forget about it. That's how old I am. I may have already forgotten. <laughs> I was waiting for that. No, no, I'm kidding. So we ju we were just now discussing being afraid of Santa. Maybe that's why. The fact that when you see Santa Claus, your bank account is about to get drained. Yeah, five-year-olds don't know about that, though. No, no. That's yeah, not the it. Parents aren't yeah, the parents aren't afraid. The parents aren't afraid. Yeah, but maybe they sense the fear in the parent. Right, right. The parents tensing up as she's That's handing, right. handing the kid over. That's like, right. Why is mom getting so upset? Right. Yeah. Well, because maybe I should be upset. All of my money is about to go away. All of my money is about to leave my checking account, and it's terrible. Yeah. And you know, uh, the other thing about that, which just uh, 
I'm talking about the kids, not Pound Town anymore. I'm talking about kids in San Clos now. Uh, it's hard to keep track. We just going back and forth. It's kind of hard to keep track. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Yeah. You're talking about kids and pounding town and stuff, and it's getting really and strange. Santa Claus. Over there. And Santa Claus. And Santa Claus. We're not Claus. saying so, Santa Claus does pound town with five year olds. No. We're not saying that at all. So what's really weird, which we were talking about last night, actually, is uh, and today, and today, excuse me. Uh, American kids are such pussies because they're afraid of Santa Claus, who's this nice, jovial, fat guy. But in Germany, they have, you know, Krampus. They celebrate Krampus. And so uh, they actually have people dressed up in Krampus suits. Right. Who is the evil Santa Claus. Yeah, the evil Santa Claus that that steals you away and kills you. Right. uh, Parades in its honor. Right. They have parades. There's lots of people dressed up as Krampus going around. And and it's not like here where you can't really touch people. Like, they're going around pinching women's boobs and pinching their butts and stuff because, you know, Krampus is naughty. And, and, like, smacking kids on the head yes. and stuff like that. We were watching a video. I was like, what is and this? And the weird thing is, none of those kids were bawling their eyes out in fear. Well, That's what we noticed. Nobody, None of the kids were afraid. Whereas you look in America, and here's a guy going, I'll give you toys, and the kids are bawling their eyes out. That's weird. Let, let's remember that Germany is... Nazi and Hitler and all that shit. That has not Nazi. I, I think Germany is inherently be, bad. Don't be liberal and bring okay, up Nazi. Right. I'm just saying. I don't, that has nothing I, think, or not. I don't like Germany. Really? I really don't. You're kidding. Wow. Man, you hold a grudge. I, I do. Man, a grudge. This has been like a hundred years. They try to take over the world once and you just can't let it go. <laughs> That's correct. Jesus. I right? can't. I can't let it go. I mean, it was one time. <laughs> well, they killed 85 a lot of people. years ago. They killed a lot of people. Set a bad example. Other people are still trying to follow it. Yeah? Yeah. Is this like that then? Oh, is that how you judge? How many people has America killed? And oh, I oh, am very oh. disappointed in America right now. Oh, well, I will well, she's say that. an equal opportunity hater. Yeah, that's, that's correct. correct. No, that's, that's, that's correct. She did tell us that at the beginning. America's going down the shithole now. I was, you know, it, y'all made it sound weird, so I couldn't really be funny, and I couldn't give the joke that I wanted because you were talking about kids and stuff. Okay, we'll give it now. But we'll when you were what? saying that Krampus goes around pinching women's boobs and stuff, and they're all laughing, I want to know where I can get this Krampus <laughs> suit. But go. then you started saying about him messing with kids, and I said, no, I can't be that guy. So <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. But it was a funny joke if I would have cut in before the kids part. Yeah, but you could you could do it all because you slap kids in the back of the head. Oh, it's a you don't win. actually get it's to win. molest the kids. Well, I'm not trying to do that anyway. No, you the molest thing. the women. You don't smack the kids. I just want to point out a that's Chris's thing, thing right there. No, 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 no. Molest no. <laughs> yes. the oh. women, smacking oh, okay. kids. <laughs> okay. I just yeah. want to point out that in this fucking podcast, for some reason, every time uh, the word kids comes out of Chris's mouth, you immensely go, a child molester. <laughs> yeah, that's like right. the fifth episode. Well, I think the reason What's for happening? that is because you called the, her favorite movie The Pedophile Dragon. Well, that's because, uh, once again, go back and rewatch that movie. Falcor is a pedophile. <laughs> First of all, I said you like to molest women. Okay. Not children. Okay. I said you like to abuse children. Yeah, but I noticed that uh, this is a Freudian thing. Every time I start talking about kids, you immediately start talking about child molesters. You ever notice that? <laughs> uh, maybe only you notice that well, because it's a Freudian thing for you. Ooh. Oh. It could be the cheeseburger ass. <laughs> ass burgers. Oh, ass burgers. Ass burgers. Ass burgers. burgers. Sorry. Ass burgers. Yeah, maybe it, it is. Maybe it is. But uh, I just think it's weird. And I'm it pretty is. sure it, uh, it definitely is a pattern, though, don't you nah, think? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so now that I've pointed it out, let's see how long it takes for it to happen again. Like, next episode. Right, right. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, i got to so use that in my introduction for the game show. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> the last thing that any of us want to be is pedophilia. Yeah, please don't say, yeah, don't say, oh, here's my brother, the child molester. Right. <laughs> yeah, don't he likes that. to molest children. Yeah, he is cool. uh, like, youth don't. attracted or whatever yeah, oh, yeah, call minor, attracted. minor attracted. Yeah, minor attracted. I, yeah. Oh, I could choke people. In fact, I, if I ever heard somebody say that, I probably would choke them. Right. So we make it a point, like if we're in the park, like we used to go and just walk around the park in Lake Charles. And kids would like just walk up to Chris and go, "Hi, I, I, will you be my friend?" He's like, "Where's your parents right now?" Where's yeah, your parents? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not falling down that road. Right, you're fixing to get me set up. Yeah. Where's the Where's yeah. the FBI? Yeah, all of a sudden the guy jumped out the bushes with a camera. Yeah, I was just minding my own business. Yeah, because yeah, that's we would how like it literally like walk away from him. We were yep. like, "Oh, not today, kid. Not today." Yep. 
That's funny. So, last uh, last uh, Christmas topic, which does not, I think, involve child molestation, and that is um, belief in Santa Claus, right? As I recall, as kids, we were told Santa Claus wasn't real from day one. Right. So I never believed in Santa Claus ever. Right. Which sucks. I mean, as an adult, I look back on it now, and I wonder how fun it would have been to actually believe in Santa Claus. I but disagree. I, really? I, I was never upset that I didn't believe in Santa. There was no disappointment there. I knew exactly wow. where the presents came from. So I, I liked it. I personally uh, liked it. That makes me sad. And in fact, I wanted to be honest with my children from the start, and my husband wouldn't let me. Good, good for them. Uh, right? I agree good for you. Thank father. God for your husband. Yeah, I. That's right. Yeah. I, I loved the whole idea of Santa Claus. I remember being so excited. I didn't want to go to sleep because I was so excited for Santa Claus. And then my parents would do the whole trick with the boots and everything. And, like, do, like, powdered sugar mm. on the floor. Like, put their shoes in boots. And then they, my dad would eat all the cookies. I never knew we made the cookies that my dad liked the most. And then we <laughs> would always have a Coke. Okay. Never, for, well, I'm just wondering. The powdered sugar, I'm assuming, would be snow. Right. Yeah. He magical tried, snow. Magical well, snow. Well, it going to get snow in. Louisiana. Correct. No, but it's because it's magical. Well, because you're pretty gullible. No, it's the oh innocence of being a child. That's right, innocence, yeah. yeah. It's, innocence. It, cause <laughs> you are made to believe in all the cartoons and all the stuff yep. in Santa Claus that he's magical. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, wasn't he's immortal. No, that. yeah, I wasn't, yeah. Which, but no, but, but what I'm saying is all the cartoons that we watch, everything, he's magical. Like, right. he's, I mean, if you watch any of the Rankin Bass, you know, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I regret that so hard that I wasn't able to believe in Santa Claus. Like, I would... I thought, I mean, I, I don't know, but I'm assuming that it was really fun for kids that actually believed in it. Are you telling me that Santa Claus isn't real? <laughs> no, no, no kids, Santa Claus even, is totally even real. Even when we got older, like like 10 or 11, my parents told us, to go, okay, Santa Claus isn't going to come see you anymore because you're in double digits now. Santa Claus doesn't visit anybody that's above 10. Are you telling no, me you parents, still believe in Santa Claus? Look, my parents said if you don't believe, you don't receive. Hmm. So, mm -hmm. all right, well, let me ask you this question, Angie. Yes, and listen. Did you know anyone, anyone at all, that ever received coal? I know people that should have received coal. No, 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 that wasn't the question. No. Because supposedly there was an audio list. And if Correct. you were on it, you received coal. And My parents I never taught us knew all kids were good. Anybody. That received cold. My parents told us that all kids were good. That's what my parents told yeah, us. Yeah, but that's bullshit. Hmm. I I'm gonna, agree. I'm going to blow your mind right now, and I'm going to tell you that I still believe in Santa Claus to <laughs> this very day. And the reason that I still believe in Santa Claus is because Santa Claus is not a real person. He's, He's not going to shimmy it. down the chimney. He's not going to eat the cookies and leave gifts under the tree. But he is a spirit, a belief that you have about joy and happiness and families being together. The embodiment of what Santa Claus stands for is not actually a real person, but he is a entity that brings us joy. So I still believe in that, and I still try to put that value into my children. That's very good. sweet. Yep. Like it's that. very cheesy, yep. no, no, and no. it's very corny, and I know we that. We love Christmas. But Christmas is actually it's his just favorite. It's just the way that I like no for Halloween's things to go. No, Christmas is your favorite. No, Halloween's my favorite. I think Halloween I just threw up in my mouth. Really, I know. I know it's like I know it's like that. Probably people who are listening also feel the same way. No, I yeah. like that. I, have I like to wipe that this cinema. wet tear off my cheek. <laughs> no, but like it we like to decorate for Christmas. We like yeah. the feeling of Christmas. We like to surprise each other with a, a even if it's a small gift, we like to surprise each other with a small gift. Yeah. And everything. Now we might not be able to afford to give everybody presents and everything, but we still like to get together with people. We still like to do things with people. You know, so yeah, like still that's traditions. what it, that's what it's about for me. It's about watching kids smile, right, and right. experiencing the joy of your family and traditions. It, it's wonderful. It's a great thing. So, you know, believe what you want and be angry that you didn't know, or be happy that you didn't know, or whatever you want to do. But for me, it's what I like the most. Oh, so I have a funny story, actually, for Christmas. Hopefully. Oh, Hopefully. 
Oh, I doubt that. Oh, no, 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 no. Hopefully it's funny. My mama, she used to buy for every one of her grandkids, okay? I'm sure she still buys for some, but anyway. Uh, so every Christmas Eve, we would go to Mama's house, and the grandkids would open their presents. Um, one year, I was in high school, and I asked for some lingerie. Now, what I was meaning was like a silky nightgown, silky pajamas, something like that. Apparently, she took lingerie to heart. Which is exactly what I would have done if you said the word lingerie. As my yeah. grandma? Your, this is your fault. As my this grandma? Is your fault. Yeah. Yes. This woman <laughs> bought me a pair of thong pajam- white panties, and the white top was see-through that I opened in front of all my other cousins. <laughs> and I was really? uh, and extremely you, and embarrassed. And did you tell them, I asked for this? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's awesome. I would like to know where those things are now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I never wore them because I was mortified that I had opened them in front of everybody. Wow. Well, it, that, that story is totally your fault. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You because you the say wrong the word. word. Yeah, you use the wrong word. Yeah. You say the word lingerie, that carries a little meaning. Well, you know? I was innocent and naive in high school, and, um, you know, I... I well, you I have to know the be... words you're using, I think. Well, I was not familiar with lingerie <laughs> and... Uh, you were uh, not expecting a thong. <laughs> or see-through. 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 Well, I mean, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have that same Christmas list? <laughs> I would like to know. Can you purchase it from the Fredericks of Hollywood catalog? Yes. Right? Can I get it from the Fredericks catalog? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Does it even still exist? Is yes. there even still a Fredericks? It's a website. That's a good question. Really? It is? Okay. Yes. All right. From where I used well, to work, we used to order stuff. All right. All right. All right. It is. So we're learning some things today. Big news. Yep. What else would you like to know about that? Not too much. <laughs> Not too much. Correct. It's a, it's a, it's a family-friendly show. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Not really. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Oh, good stuff, though. <sighs> Christmas is over now? Yeah, is it, we is, done Are we done? Yeah. Are you happy, honey? Are you pleased that we are no longer Christmasing? Uh, well... No, because we still have to actually Christmas for Christmas. But yes. uh, at least for this podcast today, we're done. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh, wait, one more Christmas topic. <laughs> die hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I right. wish Christmas would die hard. Aww. <laughs> That's such an ugly Boom. feeling. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I mentioned it last episode. I, we mentioned a couple of podcasts, but we're going to go ahead and just knock it out this episode. That is fucking Brad Pitt and face blindness. You want to fuck Brad Pitt? Ooh, that's what uh, you just said. I did think. I? I said, oh, I said I want to fuck Brad Pitt. I don't think <laughs> you I said, said that. you talked about <laughs> fucking Brad Pitt. So, you did say so, that. You yeah. did say that. You talked about doing that action. I'm just saying. Yeah. And I guess. Flexion you know, is important. I guess if you're going to go gay, you could do worse than Brad Pitt. I don't know. So, I'm just saying, you know, you're going to have standards if you're going to go gay. So, uh, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> So Brad Pitt, uh, not too long ago, has uh, come out and, and and actually several interviews said that um, he has face blindness, even though he has never been officially diagnosed by a doctor with face blindness. Anybody out there who doesn't know what face blindness is, and you shouldn't, is that uh, it's it's supposedly a uh, condition where when a person looks at uh, different people's faces, he can't tell them apart. He can't tell. He can't distinguish one person from another. So I don't really know how people. I, first of all, I don't believe in that. Yeah, <laughs> are like you telling me that that's thing? like an official, real <laughs> yeah. diagnosis so, like, like, that the do? medical field recognizes? Yeah, is how, that what you're telling me? Right, that's right. So yeah, I don't believe that at all. So like mar- multiple personality disorder, I don't believe in that either. Oh, but uh, that's a, that's for another episode. So how, how do how would someone with face blindness even function? Do we just have to recognize people by their voice? I, I don't know. It, it, well, do you recognize them by their body type? I don't know. It, it doesn't it, make any sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that doesn't just make any the sense. face? Yeah. Like, Since you have a beard and Angie does not. Right. Does, right yes, that's a good point. Yeah. 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 There's no, it, can't, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It can't exist. So It's, It is actually something called... Reed, you have to say the word because I can't. Why do I have to say the word? Because she can't. She just said it. Yeah. It's, it's prosopagnosia, I guess. That's what it's called. Prosopagnosia, something like that. I don't know. Okay. It's your so, inability to recognize faces. Yeah, just th- but saying a big word doesn't make it true. It's, shut up, let me finish. It's sometimes caused from brain damage 
following a stroke, head injury, inflammation of the brain in, from encephalitis, or, or Alzheimer's. Or... Being an actor? If you're autistic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Asperger-istic. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brad Pitt's come out and said that uh, a lot of people think he's an asshole because they come up to him and talk to him and he can't remember who they are. So they're saying that he's a narcissist and he's an asshole. Which, if you had to choose between a diagnosis for Brad Pitt, would it be face blindness or asshole? Yeah. Right? So, here's my thing. That's the context with which he declared that he had this particular diagnosis, right? Yeah. Some a lot of people, a lot of fans and things were saying that he was a jackass because when they would approach him to say, oh, I love your work or something like that, he would act like he doesn't know them, turn around and walk away. Right? Even fellow actors. Yeah. So, given the information that you know you have this particular diagnosis, wouldn't that make you try to be more polite and not less polite? Wouldn't you say, listen, I don't really recognize who you are, but I appreciate you. Thanks so much. You know, wouldn't that try to bring you more to the polite side rather than the asshole side? Right. Or would you just be rude to everybody? What if your mother walked up to you and said, Hey, son, how you doing today? And you were like, Get out of my face. I don't know who you are, bitch. Chris you know what I mean? Everybody. Yeah. Just, just saying. Right. To, for me, if I had that official diagnosis, I think I would be a little nicer to more people because I wouldn't know who I was talking to. Maybe he just needs glasses. <laughs> Maybe he's just a uh, diva. Right. And a liberal idiot. We love liberal, liberal idiots, don't we? No. No, we don't. Well, Which is why we don't love Brad Pitt. Right, yeah, we do not love Brad Pitt. We do not. He's been in some good movies, though. What is the uh, disorder you have when uh, you can't recognize money? So when a guy says, this is $20, you hand him a $5 bill. You say, whoop, I have money blindness. I right. can't tell him apart. I'm sorry. Right. You go, no, that's out. actual blindness. Right. <laughs> or when you give him your debit card and it's declined and you say, I swear I have $24,000 in my checking account. Can you run it again? It's, I'm, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm looking right at it and it says negative two. And it says 24000 Okay, so this brings me to an actual thing I have thought about that because we do have a child that is legally blind. Uh, however, she doesn't handle any money. But I've, we were taught <laughs> that blind people will, like, make folds in their money to know which, which is a $20 bill and a $10 bill and et cetera. However, when you go shopping, how do you know what the fuck the cashier's giving you? Ooh. So you know how much you're paying, right? but you don't know how much your change is. Correct. Okay, so when one of your senses is taken away, the other of your senses are heightened. So maybe when you give a $20 bill and your change is supposed to be $3.54, you know that you're supposed to be holding three bills and a couple of changes. So you just count the number of bills. Now, whether one of them's a five or a ten or something like that, you don't really know, right? Yeah, what if you pay with a hundred dollar bill and your your change is supposed to be eighty something dollars, mm -hmm. but you only get four four dollars and something cents? Oh, how, do, how do they know that? That's a good way. Do, I guess do they, they just, normally go with somebody who? No, no, no. Well, blind they, people are very they, independent. They may just mm -hmm. assume that the people will be too uh, self conscious to try to rob a blind person in front of other people. Maybe that's. I mean, it, it may be very possible that when they go shopping that they actually bring yeah. somebody with them. Yeah. I don't know. Or maybe, but I know that they are very, very independent. Or maybe they're seeing odd dogs bark if uh, they try to give them the incorrect change. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> you know. I don't know. That's right. Woof. Those dogs get a lot of trainings. I don't know how, what all they can do. <laughs> they can smell the difference between yeah. a 20 and a 10. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't dogs really either. crazy shit. <clears throat> I don't know, though. Money goes in some strange places. Yeah. Mm. Right. So I would right. imagine it would, depending on where it's been, it would probably have a much different smell. You know? Yep. Have you ever been somewhere where someone takes money out of their top pocket? Yes. And it's all wet and damp, and you're yes. like, uh, no, I'm not touching that. We yeah. had a sign on, um, I used to work at a place called Love Works in Lake Charles, and we had a sign that says, no titty cash. Yep. Mm. Titties are not personal. And we also business. used to not take um, stripper cash. They yes. had glitter all over it because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I, I would imagine was... that those two items would probably smell very differently. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet that pissed off some arts and crafts people. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What if I'm not a stripper and I just like doing crafty things? We, I mean, we've actually had people try to take them out from under their nadus. I mean, the balls. Their nadus. The balls as well. What is nadus. Nadus. Balls. Nadus are just a, a balls. There, there, there used to be a, the reason why she's saying that. I don't know if other people say this, but uh, in Virginia there was a guy that my cousin used to work for, and his la- and he was I think he was French, and his last name was. Uh, how did, he, how did he pronounce it? Damn it. No, I can't remember how to pronounce it. It was Nado or something like that. But uh, we, they used to say Nadu, uh, in referencing testicles. And uh, he used to get really offended by it. No, it's not Nadu. Yeah. So that's that's what, that's what I was just saying. Was right there. Oh, so Nadus is yeah. another word for Those. balls, yep. testicles, or huevos. Yep. Okay. Didn't know that. Never heard Nadu. Well, you know. well, there you go. So you're saying that people go into the store not only with high pocket cash, but also with G-string cash and Nadu cash. I've yes. never ever I in my life seen Nadu, see Nadu, Nadu, Nadu cash. Uh, it's a sex store. <clears throat> well, that's true. Well, it was, but you have to have standards when it comes to money. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. We actually had a guy pull money out of his. Butthole. What is that slash. called? Okay, that's a prison <laughs> wallet. That's called a prison wallet. Nobody taught me that. We had, and I was yeah. like, uh, no. Man, I need, my, I, need my, I need my juice. I'm like, you're not getting shit. <laughs> Take it out shit before you walk in the store. How hard yeah. is that? We yeah. literally, like, yeah, but like, even if they do that, are you happy about it? No, you that's right. You want them doing that? Yeah. No, <laughs> but I also don't want to know so well the owner literally took cash from somebody one time and we were like we're not counting that register he took the cash wearing rubber gloves so that should tell you Uh that i'm not touching that cash you can come back up to the front and count it at the end of the night well i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna say something that's gonna disappoint you a lot you ready i'm listening pretty much every single bill you ever touch has or mm-hmm. at one time or another been in that place. Mm-hmm. No, that's perfect. So that's perfect the fact that you don't want to touch one because you've seen it just come out of that place right. does not mean that I'm if it doesn't it. just come out of that place, it hasn't been it hasn't there. Been there yeah. I promise you, it's all been there. So when I, I that's why when I see in. people with money in their mouth, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. my God, what yeah. are you doing? Right. You have no idea because right. that money has been places. Or put it that like doing you would on never face, want your like, mouth. Give you some ink on. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> yep. Worst thing. So if you're listening to the podcast, please never ever put money in your mouth <laughs> because it has been in someone's butt. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get the hurt. <laughs> oh my god! That's yep. a guarantee. I'm telling you, it has to. Money goes around so much, and it circulates so often, and so many hands, thousands and thousands of hands. Think about it. Some of these bills have been in circulation for 100 years, right? Over that time period, it has to have passed through, I'm going to say, probably a million hands. And out of those million hands, it's been in at least 100 butts. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Right. A guarantee. Yeah, a guarantee. I'm willing to bet money on yeah. it. We need another MIT study. <laughs> How many asses has this dollar bill been in? <laughs> That's right. That's no doubt. No. Oh, and uh, snort coke with it and everything. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, that's the least of the problems, I think. Snorting You think coke. so? Because well. that's something that goes into your bloodstream and it right. passes right on somebody's ass sweat. <laughs> you're snorting coke. I don't think you're really and worried it's about the ass. Brain and everything. No, but you're not worried about the ass sweat. Because you're snorting cocaine. I'm but saying. The ass sweat is still. You probably right. have bigger it's problems than ass, 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 ass sweat if shit. you're snorting <laughs> coke. Yeah. Or a little toilet paper crumbs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so terrible. Once you start thinking about this topic, you'll never want to touch money again. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. If you really give it some thought, yeah, you no. will be like, money is the most disgusting thing That's why that I've Walker ever had. In, yeah, yep. it's the nastiest thing that you've ever had in your possession. I promise you. Yep. They've gone to fast food restaurants, and McDonald's in particular, and you know how you can go and actually do the order on the screen yourself instead Ooh. of going to the cashier? Yeah, like the kiosk. Fecal matter on that shit. Oh, I can believe, I believe it. What? Yes. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't die. Winning. 
Yep, I wouldn't doubt it. The cleanest thing in a restaurant is the toilet water. Really? Not even fucking getting. So next, what you're saying is when I go next time, I should just get a cup of ice and <laughs> go to the toilet and scoop up a nice Well, I wouldn't even touch, drink. trust the ice. Listen to me <laughs> carefully. I cannot express this enough. Careful. Never, Careful. ever, <laughs> ever get lemons at a restaurant. Oh, don't get yes. lemon in your tea. Don't get ask for lemons with your water. Don't get the lemons. Okay. Or strawberries. That's all I got to say. All right, I understand that that I understand that that's your thing, but I don't buy into that whole di- deal. And I I would like for you to explain to me why I should not get a lemon in my water. I'm going to totally be on board with this. Okay, you, so right? different people cut lemons for the lemon supply. Some people don't wash the lemons. Ooh, that's terrible. Uh, some people don't wash their hands before they cut the lemons. Oh, my God. The <laughs> lemons are in a big container. Multiple people are reaching into that container oh to get God. lemons. And you don't know how, what, where their hands have been and was the last time they washed them. Oh. Lemons are probably the dirtiest thing oh. in a restaurant. That's so terrible. She, she is also not mentioning where did they get the knife from. Oh, again. To cut the lemons. Because so I've seen people pull lemons from places they should not have. I mean, knives <laughs> from like the dirty dish pit, and instead yeah. of going and hand washing it, you know, yeah. like going to wash it, no, they just took it, cut it, and I was like, mm. yep. Also, not not put off. Don't care. <laughs> I will have lemons all day long before I will put ass money in my mouth. You understand that this money goes in people's butt crack. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, You're talking listen. about a knife that was in the sink of soapy water with dirty no. dishes. Listen to me. I'm telling you, money was in someone's ass crack. Listen you to me carefully. I need you to listen to me carefully. People, people that are cutting lemons and, and picking lemons out to put on your cup or bring to your table Go to the have been handling ass cash. So and have gone to the bathroom and touched their ass or their nadus or no, their tit, no, no. or or their tit pockets. Even still, that's third party transition. You understand? I'm still safer than oh ass God. cash. So the title of, the title of the episode is uh, "Lemon Slices and the Ass Cash." Yes. <laughs> lemon slices. It's don't it. ask for lemons. Should be degrees of separation. <laughs> okay, so. Let's actually talk about something that is super important that I am actually very upset about. Take it away, Angie. Oh, I didn't want to be the one to do it. Well, you are the one to do it because I tell you what to do. Whatever. Ooh. <laughs> um, Domestic so... violence. <laughs> Whatever, I'll fight. Well, Christmas is coming. I'm going to give her a night off on the 24th. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> so, on the 15th of November, um, Biden, the Biden administration asked the FCC take complete control of the way the internet providers do business in America. It did pass, so they're now going to um, dictate broadband prices to consumers, where the tower and satellite locations are for consumers, and the expansion of services that your local internet provider can give to you. It passed through Congress and... No, it only had to pass the FCC commission. The commissioners had to vote for it because um, mm-hmm. it wasn't a bill. It was just the commission had to vote to reinstate the um, net the neutrality, net neutrality that? again. Yeah, that net neutrality bill they were trying to pass. That's what this is. So the reason why you haven't heard about it is because they don't want you to know about it because you're about to lose a lot of freedom on the Internet. Well, how can something become law without going through Congress? Well, it's by it's the FCC. It's the federal FCC um, regulations. On it's a regulation. Yeah. It's not a bill. The, it's not a law. Technically, the FCC is going to be doing it, but basically, the government's going to be telling them what to do. It's going to make the internet your internet provider an extension of the government. Basically, it's going to tell internet providers you have to be fair straight across the board for everybody. It's going to slow down broadband speeds. They're going to say, "Oh, you can't build a tower here. You can't build do satellites here." What it's, what it's going to lead to is government control over the flow of information on the internet. I guarantee you, that's what it's going to. And that, well, that is the reason why they're doing it, so they can control the flow of information. I'll, I guarantee you, that's what it's about. Well, yeah, that would be an obvious move, right? If there's, they've already talked about how there's misinformation, and when we get the word misinformation, that's always when I know it's the truth, because they call it misinformation because they don't want you to know about it. Right. 
So they're already really big on that, saying that these people are telling stories, misinformation on the internet and things like that. So if they wanted to censor without having to worry about the First Amendment, then obviously they would just take control of the internet. Then they wouldn't right. have to worry about well, they're gonna. It, what it's gonna do? Um, it's going to mandate to micromanage nearly every aspect of how the internet <coughs> functions, mm -hmm. from how the internet service providers allocate capital and where they build, to the services that consumers can purchase. Um, they're gonna how how they can market and how they can give you services, discounts, and promotions that you can receive. Um, it's also going to limit um, network upgrades. Like it's, they're going to limit like what you can actually do in your home. Um, whether you want to get a new router and stuff like that, that's going to be controlled as well. Yep. Um, if you want a stronger router, it's going to do that. Um, it's going to have like um, they're going to have promotional rates, impo imposition of late fees, opportunity for equipment rentals, installation times. The government's going to control that, and also. They're going to um, also sometimes make people do cons customer credit and account history. They're going to be able to just look it up without to use that against you. Mm -hmm. And this is not a this is not a Republican Democrat thing I'm talking about here. This is this the government the in general wanting to control the populace. That's this what is this is. This is China thing. This is yeah. Basically, this is yes. Yeah, it's a dictatorship. Right, one one step closer to a dictatorship. And they're not nobody's talking about it because they don't want people to talk about it because they don't want people to know because it's obvious what is happening for people that can think for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know? That's all, that's all it is. They don't like somebody fucking saying something and then they control how much internet they have access to. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't like it. Right. I don't like it. And what is this called? What, what, Net neutrality. Net neutrality? Yeah. Hmm. A lot of people are just now finding out about it, but it's too late yeah, because already they passed. already voted on it. They've already passed it and they've already yep. voted on it. Who because passed it and who voted? The FCC. So it didn't have to go. The FCC. No, FCC voted on it. Biden put it to the FCC and the FCC voted to put net neutrality back well, in place. What kind of board does the FCC have it's that five has to people. vote? Really? It's five commissioners. Yeah. And, and which not all of them were for this, though. It was three, like, it was it was three, three and two. two. Yeah. But it passed. Yeah. Hmm. Look, <clears throat> what I understand is that um, back... Just give an example of how this works, actually in practice. Back in the old days, okay, uh, people, you know, before the internet, I'm talking about in the 40s, people used to uh, have little radios in their basement or whatever, and they would have, like, their own little show that they would broadcast, like, for the neighborhood and stuff. So, like, they would, the show could be, like, they would read a children's book at a certain time of the night, and then everybody in the neighborhood would, would turn on their radios, and then this guy would be reading a children's book to their bed, to their kids while they were putting them to bed, that kind of thing, okay? And I mean, it was like it was like the podcast back in the day. Basically, they could do anything they wanted, and people would. They would broadcast all kinds of stuff, but they would just talk about topics and stuff like that. And and uh, when World War Two was happening, people started because uh, you know it, people only got information that they got from newspapers or from the media. You know, well, people would get letters from soldiers and stuff like that, and they would read them on the air, and they would tell people what the hell was really happening to right. the soldiers. And the government was like, we can't have this. So the right. FCC started clamping down and passing regulations In about about how what people could and could not fucking do on the airways. And so they shut that shit down so that people couldn't just broadcast yeah. whatever they wanted to. They had to have licenses and certain types of equipment and all that. And this is the exact same fucking thing that's gonna happen with yeah. you. I guarantee it. That's what that's what happens when the truth starts getting out. Yep. And they try to put the clamps on it and, yep. and keep the damage to a minimum. Right. And the, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, if they once this kicks in, I don't know what the fuck we can ever do about it. Because once they control all information, how can you... I mean, it's hard enough to fucking wake people up to what's really going on now. Right. So Yeah, already, even with the way things are currently, it's very difficult to tell the difference between what's true and what's not true. Yeah. It's so complicated. You got two different news networks that will both tell you the exact opposite things and then profess it to be news. Yep. And fact. And it's the most ridiculous thing in the world. You read things on the internet that are two exact opposites of the same exact incident, and you never know what's true and what's not. It's yep. really difficult. It's really, really difficult. So once uh, every news organization you see is reporting the same fucking thing, that's when you know it's a lie and the government yeah, won. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. I think that's true. I think that's a very good point. Once you start getting all the same information from all of the networks and all of the social media sites, that's when you know. 
somebody's taking yeah, over the, so, the, 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 the reins. Yep. Once that happens, it's already too late. It's all a yep. lie, yeah. So, so on that happy note. Well, that was a nice tinfoil hat moment. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> that's but okay. It, but, it, but it actually, we didn't know about it until it was already too late. Like, yep. we found out, like, the day before the vote was Not that we could have done happen. anything, but. I mean, not no, that we could yeah. have, you know, done anything, but, you know. Just want people to know. Your freedoms are about to go know. away. Well, what you do is you put your you put your vote in the right spot Correct. for the next yep. election, and yep. then maybe that person can reverse all yep. the bullshit that's been broken over the last. Maybe year. though, I doubt. I, it, yeah, I doubt it as there's well. There's one thing the government there, yeah. does not do, and that's give up power. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out, but I'm not happy about it. Yep. So we will see. Yep. Right. And then it's that, that that's also assuming that your vote even counts. No. Yeah. That's yeah. right. If your vote counts, that's yeah. a pretty big one as yep. well. So. We may yep. just be screwed. We may yep. just be ass cash. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They're like a lemon slice over here. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> lemon slices. I'll eat them all day long. You understand me? All day long. Lemon slices. Cut them with a dirty price. knife. I don't care. Episode 19. But don't give me no ass cash. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, let me go ahead and do my uh, continuation here on my uh, viewer requested topic or listener request. I keep saying viewer. This is another requested topic. Oh, movie deaths. Mm-hmm. Got a few How many people died yeah, in yeah, the movie? I, got, movies, I right. got a few more. I got a few more. Next week's going to be a good one because I'm going to talk about the Twilight Zone thing. That's that's one of the more famous ones. Right? It is. A lot of interesting. There's a lot of interesting things that happen there, which I will reveal, which is pretty amazing. You know why that one's famous, more famous? Because I think it was on Faces of Death. It was featured. Oh, was it? It okay. was featured on Faces okay. of yeah, Death. Yeah, because they, they have actual footage of it happening. That's yeah. correct. Holy yeah. Cool. Crap. Yeah. And here we are talking about it now. Oh, sorry. No, no. That's yeah, right. we're, yeah, we're, we're ahead of ourselves. Week. We're yeah, we're waiting next week. Okay, so because I'm going in chronological order, so uh, <clears throat> we're up to uh, 1942. So 1942, there was a movie called My Life for Ireland, which, uh, believe it or not, was an anti-British Nazi propaganda film. And uh, what happened was a bunch of extras, I don't know how many, it just said a bunch of extras were killed when one of them stepped on a landmine. So... I think that was the only time that ever happened. Wow, a movie. yeah. How, how Why on earth that? would there actually be a live landmine? Uh, because it was Nazi Germany. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, war was already happening. And yet another reason to not like Germany. Yep, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> did you? Yep. You know, Reagan, uh, you're so negative. What about all the good things the Nazis did, huh? Oh, Y'all my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I'm just joking, world. I'm just joking. Let's not cancel me. I'm not saying the Nazis did I don't think you have to worry about being canceled. They got people all over the country these days wearing the swastika symbols on their shoulders, walking around saying kill all the Jews, and nobody's saying anything about it. Well, it's like it's not even happening. It's ridiculous. I mean, I don't know that they're not saying anything about it. They got some people flipping shit over it, but... It is happening. Yeah, but it why is, is it not arrestable? Or I mean, you know there's a thing called hate crimes and things like that. You know, it's an actual oh. offense. Because it only <laughs> matters who you hate. It depends what side you're on at the time. That's right. Yeah, yeah hate crimes are not equally distributed. That's true. Amongst the law. They're not. That's a fact. That's, no, not. He's, he's not wrong about that. That's correct. They're not yeah. equally enforced. Right. But anyway, <clears throat> that is not what we're discussing right now. Mm-hmm. That's a topic for another episode. Uh, so the next one, that was it. That was all happened that one. The next one uh, is a movie called Director, which uh, came out in 1969. And uh, it's a Russian film where a Soviet actor whose name I cannot pronounce died while performing a stunt. And that's all the information I have. Probably because it would happen in Russia. But that's all the information I have. Boring. That. Yeah. So, yeah, that was well, boring. I just had to say that it happened. Just one person. My point is to say that it happened. Not, uh, yeah. Just well, one person, not even a mass casualty no, event. No. Okay, Nothing. first of all, if it happened in Russia, it probably isn't even true. The guy was probably a spy that did some crazy <laughs> uh, shit. Actually, I'm going to disagree probably because not even in the movie. everything they do in, in uh, Russia is shoddy. So, yeah, <laughs> they probably had him jump off a cliff without an airbag or some shit. They, yeah. Or a false She airbag. forgot to take off her tinfoil hat yeah. from a little while ago. Yeah. So you have to forgive her. Take right. that off your head. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the next one is uh, in 1972, there was a movie called The Last Lion. About a guy who was hunting down a, vet, a specific line. He was trying to kill a specific line. Was it the last line? It was the last line, yeah. It was the last line that for him to kill. It wasn't the last line. Oh. Yeah. I was, so, see, she had, I was thinking Ghost in the Darkness. Right. It's very Ghost in the Darkness. I guess, yes. yeah, I guess it is. Um, so what happened was a sound technician named James Chapman was mauled to death by one of the lions on set. Well. Yeah. 
I know. You know what? What like I was thinking about the exact thing that would like happen. The see, that's line. what's interesting. So whenever I'm compiling this information, and she's and Angie sees this, she says, "Well, why was he? Why was he mauled to death by the lion?" And I said, "Because he was a human being, and it was a <laughs> lion. <laughs> right? That's why." Right. It well, seems no. it seems very natural to me. No, what I meant was was like they're like a prey for the lion on the other side of the man. No. Where was there like was he wearing like a meat necklace? Okay, I'm gonna tell you what happened. <laughs> no, right. the man is the meat right. necklace. No, no, this is what happened. Uh, lions are the kings of the jungle. And they don't like to be told what to do, which is what happens when you put them on a movie set. Right. Tell them what to do. So at some point during the movie set, the lion was like, I've had enough of this bullshit. And so he killed one of the uh, people, and then they didn't have to do any more scenes. <laughs> yeah, because he got killed. So a lion win. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, was a win-win. probably getting whipped. It was a win-win. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so that too. That's what happened. Yeah. yeah. And then Siegfried and Roy apparently did not watch this movie. So they didn't learn. Ooh, right, they right. They didn't learn from it. Man battles lion, right. man without gun, lion wins. <laughs> right. Correct. That's correct. Sometimes man with gun doesn't Sometimes. win. Sometimes. That's correct. <laughs> so, all right, so the last one I have is pretty crazy. This one is crazy. This one is fucking crazy. So, 1982, there was a movie called Fitzcarraldo, which I have not seen. Uh, it was directed by Werner Herzog, famous uh, German director. Who you would know because you don't know anything about movies, but <laughs> and doesn't like Germany. But, That's correct. But, yeah, He's and, German. Hate, and, hate, and hate Germany. But uh, oh, you know who he is though. Uh, you might know the um, Tom Cruise Jack Reacher movie. Have you seen that? Yes. Okay. The the main bad guy. Reacher. No, not yet. Yeah. yeah um, but that's the name of the movie, is it not? Jack Reacher. The name of the movie is Jack Reacher. Oh, not I just the Amazon thing. The Tom no, that's the movie. Amazon show. The Tom oh, Cruise okay. movie. Okay, so okay, okay. on the Tom Cruise movie, there's the the main bad guy that they find at the end who doesn't have a name. He had to chew off his own fingers. That guy. That's, yeah, I don't remember. I have that's this one. War, that's actually Warner. <laughs> that's actually Warner Herzog acting in the movie. So okay. That's who he is. If, if people are curious, it doesn't matter. Anyway, just throwing that movie trivia out there. So the movie starred Klaus Kinski, who. Uh, is known as basically being, you know, how actors are known for being douchebags. Well, he's known as being the craziest douchebaggiest actor that there ever was, and uh, rightfully so because he was. I thought that was and, Brad Pitt. No, it's not Brad Pitt. Believe no, it or not, he's an asshole. Yeah, no, oh, no, not okay. crazy douchebag. Yeah. Oh, I no, gave him the Klaus wrong Kinski, label. We could probably do a whole episode on his fucking shenanigans. He's a, <laughs> he was a, and he was a very unattractive man. Very unattractive man. I know you two don't know who he is, but people who are familiar with movies know who Klaus Kinski is. The uh, 1970s uh, Nosferatu, the vampire movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he played Nosferatu, the vampire. He needed very little makeup, if you follow me. Um, but anyway, oh, no. so uh, in this movie, uh, they were they were actually filming in the jungle. <clears throat> so it was, Yeah, the, the jungles of Peru. Okay, they're filming in, in the jungles of Peru. And uh, so they were using, so the place was uh, not easily accessible. So, um, they were using natives, indigenous natives, to, to do work on the set and stuff. And uh, so the movie suffered two plane crashes, a minor war with the indigenous population due to the treatment and deaths of some of the indigenous extras. One crew member was bitten by a poison snake and was forced to amputate his leg with a chainsaw what? to survive. Yeah. With a chainsaw. You hear me? Which I'm pretty sure he didn't actually cut his own leg off. I'm pretty sure somebody else cut his leg off for him. Wow. But yeah, that happened. I wonder what kind of medical knowledge the person with the chainsaw had. Uh, you don't need medical knowledge to cut somebody's leg no, off. I'm just chainsaw. saying. Like, right. I'm just saying. And who was, it was somebody going, hey, I'll do it. Right? Well, that's <laughs> actually Klaus Kinsey probably. Yeah, Klaus Kinsey yeah, probably did all First of First off, how do you get to two plane crashes? After the first plane crash, are you not saying, hey... Let's be a little more careful with well, the airplanes. we already talked about another movie where they had three plane crashes. Oh, my God. So this one's actually doing better. Right, uh, well, they're winning, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, Klaus Kinsey was such a douchebag. He was so hated by the crew and the indigenous people for the way he treated everybody that the chief of the native tribe offered to kill him himself for the director. So, as a favor to the director, he offered to kill Klaus Kinsey because everybody hated him so much. Wow. Which, yeah. Of which, that would have actually been a nice thing for the world if, <laughs> if Klaus Kinski had been taken out. I'm not going to lie. Oh, boy. So, why did Klaus Kinski say no? No, no, no. No, he didn't say no. <laughs> yeah, well, he said no because he didn't want to get killed. But, uh, oh, no, I mean the director. Yeah. Why well, the I'm going to tell you why. The oh, director oh. turned him down because he didn't want to have to start filming the movie all over again with a new actor. 
Uh, wow. So I would have waited until the last. The, correct. Yeah, I would have waited until, whoop, that's the last scene, Klaus. Okay, now I'll get him. No, that's not. <laughs> I'm saying, why would you, like, don't tell Klaus it's the last scene, but then tell the the chief, all right, yeah. you're yeah. a go. Right, this time when you hear me say and cut, you cut. <laughs> Dual meaning, okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no law out there. That's right, yeah, he, they could have got away with it, I'm sure, because. I wow. promise you, Ritual sacrifice. knowing what I know about Klaus Kinski, everybody on that set would have kept their mouth shut. I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if none of them got in trouble for killing indigenous people. Well, that's because nobody cares the about indigenous, indigenous people. people are not know. getting in trouble for killing Klaus. Right. That's right. Plus, he yeah. was a German. You don't even have to be indigenous. No. Alec Baldwin did it. No, that's right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we, will discuss, a, we will discuss him. <laughs> we will discuss Alec Baldwin. In fact, did you know there's another movie where somebody was actually killed where Alec Baldwin was in? Uh, but I'm, I'm going to save it for, for the next episode. Well, um, I know that you, in the next episode, will be telling us all about The Crow. Um, well, actually, yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Maybe. Yeah, maybe I not. can't remember. I got a whole list there's, I got to go through. More. But uh, definitely, uh, I will be talking about the Twilight Zone episode. Uh, Any in chance episode. Alec Baldwin is German? Huh. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I don't like that you are so anti-German. I, I like Germany. Okay, well, good for you. Thanks for coming back, because I'm part German. <laughs> right? I'm a fan. Germany's got beautiful countrysides and lots of lovely architecture and, you know. Beer and do, do you know how overpopulated the world would be if it weren't for Germany? Oh, my right? God. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> you just said right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, right away, but quickly, quickly, quickly. It was like a knee-jerk reaction for me to agree with Chris, but then I realized how silly that uh, that comment actually was. Yeah, yeah. you went right, and I was. Yeah, oh I mean, God. I was, I was surprised at how quickly you agreed. I was like, oh, and shit, he already was thinking it. Okay, all right. Well, shit. I thought you were on my team for a minute. <laughs> Viva la Germany. <laughs> das Boot. <laughs> you know what that means? It, it means the boot. No, it doesn't. I don't know it what it means. It means the boat. Oh, the, the boat. boat. Yes, that is the name of a famous oh, German movie. Well, that's not what I wanted to U-boat. say. I wanted to say the boot. <laughs> <laughs> Which he's now said twice. Das Boot. <laughs> yeah, the boat. Yeah, you now said twice in German. <laughs> It's saying it, saying it with different inflection doesn't change the meaning of the word. It could. You don't know. Maybe I speak fluent German. Well, maybe you do. Maybe I don't know how to speak German. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe none of us know how to speak German. <laughs> Although well, I would like to. Well, it's called a book. Farfic nigga. Rosetta Stone. Yep, there it is. Yep. You can do it. It's the way to do, do it. it. Super doable. Wouldn't you like to speak another language? Not German. Well, I yeah, feel the need to, to learn to speak Spanish. Oh, yeah, you definitely Ooh, need yeah. that. Yeah. We, we don't have to worry about it. I think that that's going to become natural pretty soon. Yeah, that's just going to become the official language of the United States. Pretty soon it feels like it, yeah. I was reading a script for a play one time, and I was playing a German lady, and I you read, hated it? I read the German whatever it was. I don't know what it said, but I read it, and um, everybody went, oh, wow. What does that mean? I went, I don't fucking know. I don't speak German. That sounded like you did. I said I was acting. How do you know that you were pronouncing it correctly? Also? I don't. Okay. I was acting. She was acting. It sounded she like was, I knew what I was okay. saying. Right. All acting like I knew a what fluent I was German speaker. Right. That's correct. Right. See? And she was believable, apparently. That's correct. Apparently, yeah. They all thought I knew what I was saying. Okay. So just don't become Brad Pitt. No, I, I, I remember faces. I don't remember names. I have name blindness. I think you're already Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> you already hate everybody. That's Chris. Right? Oh, well, I mean, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he admits it freely as well. Is that true? It's yeah. my I ash hate everyone burgers. except if you're a woman and you want to have sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't hate you. <laughs> but, yeah, pretty much everybody else. <laughs> That's not cool. That's not cool sorry, because buddy. I'm not a woman and I don't want to have sex with you. I was like, sorry, buddy. Sorry, Rachel. Sorry. What if, oh, what's her fucking name? Crazy lady wanted to have sex with you. Wow. That now that is a down? Dad's killer. Oh, uh, what? Oh, uh, Shabizness? Yeah, Shabizness. Oh, what Taylor Shabizness wanted to have no, sex with you? No, no, Would no, you no. like her? No, I wouldn't. 
nor wouldn't you? I no. mean, there was always an exception. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I know how that story ends. <laughs> so no. Yeah, that's, end up in a bus that's not a that's yeah. not a happy ending no, for no, sure. No. Although it started off as a happy right. ending. Yeah. It didn't end with a happy ending. Nope. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm thinking about it now. Ugh. Getting the chills. So, okay. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, do my movie recommendation. And I'm going to do a Christmas themed movie recommendation. Yay. Yep. <clears throat> it's your kind of movie, though. It's a horror, Christmas horror movie, however. So there you your go. Your horror Best. movies suck. Best of both worlds. I work. think you've seen this one. So you might have. Krampus, 2015. Krampus, starring Adam Scott and Tony Collette. I think we watched it, and it's not. Wait, does he pinch women's boobies? No. No? No, he does not. I've never so, seen it because I don't watch horror movies. It's uh, not a good movie. I enjoy it. There's actually a very funny joke right in the beginning when they go to take a when they take a uh, family photo uh, with um, Santa Claus. <laughs> don't spoil the joke. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to spoil the joke. It's very funny. Um, but anyway, so the, the movie is uh, this family, this dysfunctional family that doesn't really like each other all together for Christmas. You know, relatives are coming in that they also don't like. And so nobody really gets along in the house. And then what happens is they act, they uh, they offend uh, the holiday of Christmas, which calls Krampus down on them. So Krampus attacks the house with his minions, uh, trying to, you know, kill everybody. And they're trying to fend them off. And there's a lot of um, uh, animatronic, you know, monsters and stuff and it's not a lot of CGI you know Krampus is uh, animatronic and it looks pretty good I, I enjoyed it I, I was surprised I was expecting I was told to watch the movie and I thought oh my god this movie is going to be so cheesy I'm going to hate it and I was actually told you're going to think it's cheesy and then you're going to find yourself loving it and that is exactly what, That's happened. what happened I was like holy shit I'm enjoying this movie <laughs> So and you were shocked by yeah, it yeah I was shocked by it so it was actually it was actually done quite well and you know anytime they, they use Actual physical props versus CGI, I, I prefer that as well because that's a dying art form. But they pull it off. There's some really cool, creepy scenes with some crazy looking uh, monsters attacking them. I enjoy it. It's a good movie. All right, Christmas horror movie. Krampus. Krampus. Got 2015. It. Krampus. Love well, it. being that we've talked about movies so much, I did have a thought about movies. Okay. So oh, is this one of Reagan's ramblings? Yeah, Reagan's yeah. random thought. Yeah. Let's hear it. So I have noticed. In movies that for some reason people like to take pills with no drink they just fucking stick it in their mouth and swallow it like it's nothing I myself can't really take a pill without drink um, and don't find the need to normally there's liquid somewhere within reach right <laughs> uh, the other thing I've noticed is if it happens to be in the bathroom they will take it with water, but they find the need to stick their head under the faucet to drink the water. Mm. It, like instead of cupping their the water in their hand or something. Right. D does anyone else? So have, have you never eye? had your head under the faucet? Fuck no. <laughs> okay. You having this random thought, and uh, I know what the answer is. Okay. As oh, always, great. I know what the answer Chris is. Chris knows Can't wait. everything. Can't wait. We've As already. we've already discussed on this podcast. Mm -hmm. People who are in the movie industry are able to put their heads down in unusual positions and take things in their mouth and swallow quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> it's in fact, it's how they got the movie role. That's how they're able to do it. A lot of practice. A so lot even of practice. the men? Yes. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Even the men, apparently. Okay, so why do they put their heads under the faucet? Or it's a habit. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a hard object sticking out with liquid coming out of it. Oh, I got to put my mouth down there. <laughs> yep. See? The answer is so obvious. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that you you cleared that up for me. Well, great. All right. Hit yeah. me up next week with another random thought. I'll clear that one up, too. All right. I sure will. <laughs> Woo. Yep. Well, that, was, that was nice. Another episode down the drain. Yeah, so. yeah. I think that should that should be a good spot to uh, close it out. What do you think? Um, yeah, sounds good. I will have another random thought next week. <laughs> I can't wait to hear hear what you have to say about that one. Me too. Me too. Me three. Yay! Woo! Woohoo!
Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we amuse ourselves. That's oh, wonderful. That's wonderful. Oh, at least we amuse someone. <laughs> yeah. A podcast for four. That's that's what we like to call this. All right. Name was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it was already taken. That's why we had to choose another one. So, yeah. All right, guys. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next week. Big dog out. Bye-bye. Bye.